Hello, this is R.J. Deacon reading the Supreme Court of the United States Opinion Syllabus in Financial Oversight and Management Board for Puerto Rico versus Aurelius Investment. Certiori to the United States Court of Appeals for the First Circuit. Argued October 15th, 2019. Decided June 1st, 2020. In response to a fiscal crisis in Puerto Rico, Congress invoked its Article 4 power to make all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory belonging to the United States, uh, that's Section 3, Clause 2, to enact the Puerto Rico Oversight Management and Economic Stability Act, PROMESA. PROMESA created a financial oversight and management board whose seven voting members are to be appointed by the president without the Senate's advice and consent. Congress authorized the board to file for bankruptcy on behalf of Puerto Rico or its instrumentalities to supervise and modify Puerto Rico's laws and budget and to gather evidence and conduct investigations in support of those efforts. After President Obama selected the board's members, the board filed bankruptcy petitions on behalf of the Commonwealth and five of its entities. Both court and board had decided a number of matters when several creditors moved to dismiss the proceedings on the grounds that the board members' selection violated the Constitution's Appointments Clause, which says that the President shall nominate and, by and with the advice and consent of the Senate, shall appoint all officers of the United States. That's uh, Article 2, Section 2, Clause 2. The court denied the motions, but the First Circuit reversed. It held that the board members' selection violated the Appointments Clause, but also concluded that any board actions take taken prior to its decision were valid under the de facto officer doctrine. Uh, the Supreme Court held the decision below is reversed and remanded, and Justice Breyer delivered the opinion of the court. The Appointments Clause constrains the appointments power as to all officers of the United States, even those who exercise power in or or in relation to Puerto Rico. The Constitution structure provides strong reason to believe that this is so. The Appointments Clause reflects an allocation of responsibility between the President and the Senate in cases involving appointment to high federal office. Concerned about possible manipulation of appointments, the Founders both concentrated the appointment power and distributed it, ensuring that the primary responsibility for important nominations would fall on the president, while also ensuring that the Senate's advice and consent power would provide a check on that power. Other similar structure constraints in the Constitution apply to all exercises of federal power, including those related to Article IV entities. Um, see, for example, Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority versus Citizens for Abatement of Aircraft Noise. The objectives advanced by the Appointments Clause Council strongly in favor of applying that clause to all officers of the United States, even those with powers and duties related to Puerto Rico. Indeed, the clause's text firmly indicates that it applies to the appointment of all officers of the United States, and history confirms this reading. Congress's long-standing practice of requiring the Senate's advice and consent for territorial governors with important federal duties, supports the inference that Congress expected the Appointments Clause to apply to at least some officials with supervisory authority over the territories. The Appointments Clause does not restrict the appointment or selection of board members. The Appointments Clause does not restrict the appointment of local officers that Congress vests with primarily local duties. The clause's language suggests a distinction between federal officers who exercise power of the national government, and non-federal officers, who exercise power of some other government. Pursuant to Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, and Article 4, Section 3, Congress has long legislated for entities that are not states, the District of Columbia, and the territories. In so doing, Congress has both made local law directly and also created local government structures, staffed by local officials, who themselves have made and enforced local law. This suggests that when Congress creates local offices using these two unique powers, the officers ex exercise power of the local government, 
not the federal government. Historical practice indicates that a federal law's creation of an office does not automatically make its holder an officer of the United States. Congress has, for more than two centuries, created local offices for the territories in the District of Columbia that are filled through election or local executive appointment. In the history of Puerto Rico, whose public officials with important local responsibilities have been selected in ways that the Appointments Clause does not describe, is consistent with the history of other entities that fall within Article IV scope and with the history of the District of Columbia. This historical practice indicates that when an officer of one of these local governments has primarily local duties, he is not an officer of the United States within the meaning of the Appointments Clause. The board members here have primarily local powers and duties. PROMESA says that the board is an entity with, within the territorial government that shall not be considered a department, agency, establishment, or instrumentality of the federal government. That's uh, Section 101C. And Congress gave the board a structure, duties, and related powers that are consistent with this statement. The, bro the board's broad investigatory powers, administering oaths, issuing subpoenas, taking evidence, and demanding data from governments and creditors alike, are backed by Puerto Rican, not federal law. Its powers to oversee the development of Puerto Rico's fiscal and budgetary plans are also quintessentially local. And in exercising its power to initiate bankruptcy proceedings, the board acts on behalf of and in the interests of Puerto Rico. Um, referencing Buckley versus Vallejo and Freetag versus Commissioner and Lucia versus SEC do not provide the relevant legal test here for each considered an appointments clause problem concerning the importance or significance of duties that were indisputably federal or national in nature. Nor do LeBron versus National Railroad Passenger Corporation or MWAA help LeBron considered whether Amtrak was governed was a governmental or private entity, but the fact that the board is a government entity does not answer the primarily local versus primarily federal question. And the MWAA court expressly declined to address appo the appointments clause questions. However, the court's analysis in O'Donohue versus United States and Palmore versus United States does provide a rough analogy. In O'Donohue, the court found that Article III's tenure and salary protections applied to judges of the District of Columbia courts because those courts exercised the judicial power of the United States. But the court reached the seemingly opposite conclusion in Palmore, a case decided after Congress had altered the na nature of the District of Columbia local courts so that its judges adjudicated primarily local issues. Given the conclusion reached here, there is no need to consider whether to overrule the insular cases and their progeny. See, for example, Dows versus Bidwell. To consider the application of the de facto officer doctrine, see Ryder versus United States, or to decide the questions about the application of the Federal Relations Act and public law. The decision below is reversed and remanded. Justice Breyer delivered the opinion of the court in which Chief Justice Roberts and Justices Ginsburg, Alito, Kagan, Gorsuch, and Kavanaugh joined. Justice, Justices Thomas and Sotomayor filed opinions concurring in the judgment. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to get all of the podcast, we can be reached at rhodesscholar80 at gmail.com. That's R-O-A-D-S and the number eight zero or on Twitter at court syllabus.